Yes, guys, welcome back to Flat Cap Euro Talk here. And we are going to be talking about Piero Hincapié, which is a very fun name to say, I must say, the Ecuadorian international who's playing for Bayer Leverkusen out in Germany. We had some original links to the guy, but originally I didn't really see any sort of you know, actual substance behind it, any real, you know, uh, belief, you know, in that sort of rumor. And now apparently Spurs are getting a bit desperate here when it comes to left-sided center back and have decided to potentially throw in a 40 million euro bid by the looks of it for Piero Hincapié. So let's maybe take a look at maybe see if he's actually worth that 40 million euros and whether you'd actually be excited for him to come to Spurs. But everybody, while you're in here, do smash that like button and do let me know in the comments whether Piero Hincapié is really the guy that you would go for at left-sided center back. He played 27 matches last season in the Bundesliga. He was kind of more of like a late bloomer, you would say. He only just moved uh, to the Bundesliga as well, only just moved to Europe, really. Uh, so he did kind of have, you know, a, a good season, but didn't get to play as much football as maybe other center backs that we're looking at. One goal and two assists in the Europa League. He played six matches there, had a goal. Uh, he also played plenty of fullback this season, by the way, everybody. But uh, born in Ecuador in Esmeraldas, Ecuador, 20 years old, born in 2002. He's six feet inches, not very tall. And even uh, when you do see him kind of, you know, on TV and everything, he doesn't look very big either. Uh, left footed center back can play as a left back as well, has played, you know, as a left sided center back in a back three. Uh, his youth career was over at Independiente del Valle. And then his market value is 15.3 million pounds and his contract is up in 2026. But like I said, the reported fee that people are asking for is around 40 million euros, everybody, uh, for Piero Hincapié. But let's take a look at maybe some of his stats and compare him to all the rest of the center backs across Europe's top five leagues. When it comes to interceptions, you know, he is ranked very, very high. And, you know, I'll say this again, everybody, the closer that, you know, these numbers are to 100, you know, when it comes to those percentiles, the better the number is. Essentially, you can also tell that, you know, the green the number is probably the better the number is too uh just to help you out in that regard but right the higher the number is you know the the better he ranks you know across all center backs in europe's top five leagues so you can tell you know in some defensive stats he's actually excellent and pressure is successful pressure is something that christian romero does really well in you know stats wise very interesting to see someone like piero doing really really well in that regard in the top one percentile of that sort of metric progressive carries he ranks really high there uh, it actually probably should be a bit greener, you know, on my end. But, you know, there are some maybe worrying stats like, you know, percentage burials one. He's not going to be very good in the air. Uh, it seems like in the one on one situations, he's not brilliant. He's not poor either. Um, he's an interesting sort of player, like defensively seems to be very aggressive. Is he like as, you know, good in the one on one as powerful as an Evan and Dika? I'm not really sure. But he definitely has a probably a bit more kind of, you know, mobility and agility, you know, about him, which can be very, very useful. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, there are some of the stats there on Piero. I think probably the big ones that stand out again are sort of those successful pressures, some of those defensive stats, but, you know, not a lot there that I would say, you know, really, you know, grabs my attention, maybe apart from the successful pressures. But let's maybe compare him to some other center backs and especially one of our own and Ben Davies, someone who has had a really successful season as a left sided center back under Antonio Conte. Uh, when you compare their past completion percentages, Davies is a bit higher, but I do believe Piero actually completes maybe more passes per 90. Uh, then Ben Davies does progressive passes, though. Ben Davies uh, completing more there. A progressive pass is a pass, I believe, of 10 yards or more forward or at least five yards or more forward towards the uh, towards the goal. Uh, passes under pressure, though, which is basically any time, you know, someone is absolutely all over you. You know, things are tight. You know, it's not an easy pass. Piero Hincapié is actually completing close to nine of those a game, which is actually very impressive. Progressive carries, Ben Davies done exceptionally in that metric this season. Uh, he is actually kind of an underrated ball carrier. I feel like Ben Davies because it's not like he's really blowing past his man or anything, but I think he doesn't waste time actually when he's carrying the ball. Uh, ben Davies, if you ask me, and that's something that's going to be really important as a as a left sided center back where you need to get the ball up the pitch, you need to progress it, but you can't waste time. You know, like you can't take your time in the way that often we see actually someone like an Eric Dyer do. He seems to kind of take his time as he's carrying the ball up the pitch, whereas Ben Davies, you know, shows a bit of urgency, which is nice. Aerial win percentage. I mean, they're both pretty close to each other, but Ben Davies ranks out higher there. And then tackles and interceptions. Um, Hincapié has more per game. I would say that's kind of influenced, though, by the fact that he plays in the Bundesliga. When you play in the Bundesliga, your stats are going to be 
really heavily, you know, kind of influenced or really heavily kind of saturated by the fact that you have more opportunities to make challenges. You know, teams play really high lines. It's very back and forth in the Bundesliga. So sometimes your stats can be a bit inflated in that regard. Percentage of dribblers tackled, though. I mean, Piero and Kapi much, much better in the one on one situations coming up against a dribbler uh, than Ben Davies. In fact, when you actually compare Ben Davies to a lot of the center backs that we're looking at. Ben Davies is actually, by the looks of it, quite poor in certain one-on-one situations. He doesn't really, you know, know how to stick his foot out and be able to win a challenge and, you know, be able to just take a clean off of his man. He's he's not actually that good in that regard. But let's take, you know, a look at some of the other players that, you know, we're looking at. When you compare uh, Indica to Hincapié, uh, you can tell that, you know, when Indica is in there, I think he's, you know, a bit better, you know, uh, under pressure or at least coming in the one on one situations. You know, he's going to make, you know, a higher percentage of dribblers tackled. Uh, actually, their tackles and interceptions are actually, you know, pretty similar to each other. They're both above four. They have actually quite similar stats. And if you actually ask me, Piero Hincapié probably has better stats when it comes to playing that sort of left sided center back role. But Indica, I would say, still sort of my preferred choice between the two because he's exceptional in the air. He's absolutely massive, and we do need some height, I think, in that back line. We need some kind of intimidation back there because Christian Romero, as aggressive as he is, he hasn't been that great in the air defensively. Eric Dyer hasn't been great in the air defensively. Ben Davies hasn't been great in the air defensively. And so maybe hiring, maybe getting someone like an Hincapié, I just don't know Like if that really solves the issue where Indica could probably fix that issue for us. And he's also excellent in, a, in one-on-one situations, like I said before. But then if you were to compare Hincapié, over with Yasko Gavardio, you know, that player that I think is probably on the top of everyone's list, Yasko Gavardio, who also plays in the same league. So we have been comparing Evan Indica and Yasko Gavardio to Hincapié. They all play in the same league. So there is, you know, kind of the belief that, you know, the stats are kind of inflated by the Bundesliga all the same since they play against the same opponents. But pass completion percentage, you know, the Oscar Gavardio higher there, passes under pressure, he's higher, he's almost higher in every single metric, perhaps because he also plays for a team like Leipzig, who play very, very progressive football, extremely high line, you know, very end to end sort of stuff over there. Uh, Tedesco has had a great time, you know, kind of implementing a style. Jesse Marsh, you know, doesn't make things you know, kind of easy and relaxed, you know, it's very high octane sort of football. And so Yasko Davardio's stats are sort of going to reflect that. Uh, but at the same time, he's done exceptionally and he is still only 20 years old, uh, everybody as well. The one thing that he seems maybe to not do as well in is sort of the, you know, the one-on-one situations like uh, Hincapié does with only 50, 52.9% of his uh, percentage of dribblers tackled in the one-on-one situations. But I don't know, with Gavardio, I think he's still clearly the favorite choice. And Dika is probably still my favorite choice, you know, between all of them. Um, but when it comes to Hincapié, I sort of see maybe why Spurs are looking at him. It seems like, you know, this Gavardio deal is almost impossible to happen this summer. So if we were actually going to get that done this summer, it doesn't seem like a possibility. Bastoni is not a possibility. Are we really set on Indica? Do we want Indica or Hincapié? Personally, I'd take Indica. I feel like he'd probably fix more issues for us, but I do maybe see why we're going after Hincapié. He has a lot of common, you know, kind of characteristics to a Ben Davies. He's going to play, you know, a bit more of that sort of fullback as a left side center back sort of kind of position, you know, making that transition. He could kind of carry some, you know, sort of similar attributes that Ben Davies does, you know, ball progression, you know, being able to maybe pick out passes a bit quicker than maybe your average center back would, you know, maybe a bit more agility, a bit more recovery pace. So I feel like Kincapié offers something very, very different to Indica. They're actually not that comparable when you actually look at, you know, what they look like as defenders or even as center backs. They're quite different. So you could actually get, you know, one good thing with Indica, whereas with Hincapié, you get, a, you know, something different that's also good. So I actually take either of them. 40 million euros for Hincapié, though. Again, I'd probably sooner pay 40 million euros for someone like Indica. I mean, they're both extremely young, but this is not really a, a signing that I'm not really going to, you know, really criticize or anything like that i think it's plenty okay and i'm i'm happy with Incapia if this were going to be the player that we go after at the end of the day we just need a left-sided center back in before spurs set off for korea but everybody do let me know in the comments what you think of piero Incapia. one of the better names i must say that we're linked with as well very very fun name to say uh, but yeah everybody smash that like button on your way out feel free to drop a super thanks if you feel like supporting the channel but as always everybody i will be seeing you